what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we shall continue with the shrimad bhagavatam series which i had started on akshay tritya and we will start with the first verse again i had just uh, given the translation and i didn't read out the purport so today we will read the translation and the purport so here we go the shrimad bhagavatam begins and if you have not watched the first and the second video in it's there in this playlist okay so in the second video there's a description of a uh, decoit story what happens if you uh, go and read or even if you listen one word or one verse or one syllable from the shrimad bhagavatam what happens how your life gets transformed so if you have not watched it please go and watch it it is in this playlist only all right and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you understand the shrimad bhagavatam and if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is inquisitive about the scriptures athato brahma jigyasa all right so now let's read the first verse of the shrimad bhagavatam again okay ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय जन्मादितरतु भिग्यस्वरा तेने ब्रह्म हृदयादिकव मुह्यती यत सूरया तेजो वारिमृत यथा विनम स्थिसर्गो मृषा धाम स्वयन निरस्तकुहाक सत्यम पलाम धीम देर गो दिस इज दि फर्स्ट वर्स सो नाउ आई विल गो टू दि ट्रांसलेशन ओ मै लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण सन ऑफ वसुदेव O all pervading personality of Godhead I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahma ji the original living being by him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal i therefore meditate upon him lord shri krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world i meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth so now here is the purport purport is the detailed explanation obeisances unto the personality of godhead vasudev vasudev is the son of vasudev directly indicate lord krishna obeisances unto the personality of godhead vasudev directly indicate lord krishna who is the divine son of vasudev and devaki vasudev and devaki this fact will be more explicitly explained in the text of this work shri vyasdev asserts here in that Shri Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and all others are his direct or indirect plenary portions or portions of the portion there's a shloka in the Shrimad Bhagavatam where it says ete ch am sakala pumsam krishna stu bhagavan asvam that shloka is there that there are many uh, ams amshas and kalas yes the, the amshas and kalas are two ways how we understand vishnu tattva and vishnu's expansion so that shloka will also come in the near future so there are differences between amshas and kalas but they are all expansions and parts and uh, parts of vishnu actually but ete cha amsa kala pumsam krishna astu bhagavan asvam but krishna lord krishna is the uh, he is the original personality of god he is the cause of all causes bhagavan asvam now and all others are his direct or indirect plenary portions or portions of the portions there you go amshas and kalas i will explain this later all right now shrila jeev goswami has even more explicitly explained the, the subject matter in his krishna sandarbha so jeev goswami is a famous saint in the line of gaudiya vaishnav sampradaya and here it's written that he has explicitly explained this subject matter in the krishna sandarbha which is a very famous book of course 
Now, and Brahma, the original living being, has explained the subject of Sri Krishna substantially in his treaties named Brahma Samita Venum Konanta Madavinda Dalaya Takcham Balahavatam Samasitam Buddha Sundarangam. <laughs> that is the Brahma Samita, where Brahmaji has explained about Lord Krishna and the spiritual world, about the description of how the spiritual world looks. Now, in the Sama Veda Upanishad, it is also stated that Lord Sri Krishna is the divine son of Devaki. There is also a shloka which is Krishnaya Vasu Devaya Devaki Nandanaya Cha Nanda Gopakumalaya Govindaya Namo Namaha. That shloka is said by whom? If you know, then write it in the comments. Yes, that's said by none other than Kunti Devi herself. Now, therefore, in this prayer, the first proposition holds that Lord Sri Krishna is the primeval Lord. And if any transcendental nomenclature is to be understood as belonging to the absolute personality of Godhead, it must be the name indicated by the word Krishna, which means the all-attractive. So, the word Krishna means all-attractive. Now, you understand what it means. In Bhagavad Gita, in many places, the Lord asserts himself to be the original personality of Godhead. And this is confirmed by Arjuna and also by great sages like Narad, Vyas and many others. Do you know which shloka this is? So this is how we read these scriptures. So whenever we find some reference to any other scripture pertaining to the same context, we always remember the other verses from the other scriptures. So here it said that, Lord Krishna asserts himself to be the original personality of God and this is confirmed by Arjuna and also by great sages like Narad, Vyas and many others. Which is the shloka? It is mentioned. It is it's there in the Gita. So Arjuna, when he sees the Virat Rup, the universal form of Lord Krishna, he says, Asito Devalo Vyaso Swayam Chaiva Bravishime Param Brahma Param Dhama Pavitram Param Bhavan Purusham Shashvatam Divyam Adi Deva Majam Vivum Ahustvam Rishaya Sarve Devarshi Naradas Tatha Asito Devalo Vyaso Swayam Chaiva Bravishime He says Param Brahma Param Dhama You are the Param Brahma, you are God Param Dhama, you are the ultimate destination Pavitram Paramam Bhavan, you are the most pure. Bhavan is a reference uh, to a personality with uh, with a lot of respect. Yes, in Sanskrit there are words like Tvam, there is Bhavan. Tvam is more of uh, a equal, yes, suppose somebody is a friend, then you say Tvam. Bhavan is somebody who is very superior, who is very respectful, one who is very great. Yes. And then he says, Asito Devalo Vyaso. So, great sages like Asita, Devala, Vyasa. So, I am Chaiva Bravishmi. You yourself also have confirmed that you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, that is the shloka which is mentioned here. In the Padma Puran, it is also stated that out of the innumerable names of the Lord, the name of Krishna is the principal one. Vasudev indicates the plenary portion of the Personality of Godhead. And all the different forms of the Lord being identical with Vasudev are indicated in this text. The name Vasudev particularly indicates the divine son of Vasudev and Devaki. Sri Krishna is always meditated upon by the Paramhamsas who are the perfected ones among those in the renounced order of life. So Paramhamsas... Hans is who basically? Hans is nothing but a swan. Yes, so what does a swan do? Swan has the power to take the milk and leave the water. Swan is very powerful. So, Paramhamsas are the best of the best of the best of the perfected beings. So, they have the ability to take the essence from everything, which is that everything is connected to God. So, that's the essence of everything. So, that's what is written here. They are always meditating upon Krishna. Paramahamsas are always meditating upon Krishna. Now, Vasudev or Lord Sri Krishna is the cause of all causes. That is also there in the Brahma Samhita. Which verse is it there? Sarva Karana Karanam. <laughs> That's the verse where it says, Sarva Karana Karanam, cause of all the causes. Everything that exists emanates from the Lord. How this is so is explained in later chapters of this work. 
This work is dedicated is described by Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya as the spotless Purana. What is the name of the uh, spot, how do you say spotless Purana? This is known as Amalam Purana. Yes, Srimad Bhagavatam is the Amalam Purana. Uh, and it is described by Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also in the line of the Gaudiya Vaishnava of Sampradaya. In fact, he is the originator of the Gaudiya Vaishnava of Sampradaya. And he is one of the Chinna Avataras. Yes, he is the only avatar which comes in Kaliu. We will read about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu later. Because it contains the transcendental narration of the personality of God at Sri Krishna. The history of the Srimad Bhagavatam is also very glorious. It was compiled by Sri Vyasdev after he had attained a maturity in transcendental knowledge. He wrote this under the instructions of Sri Naradji, his spiritual master. Vyasdev compiled all the Vedic literatures containing the four divisions of the Vedas, the Vedanta Sutras or the Brahma Sutras, then the Puranas and the Mahabharata and so on. So now here. Who wrote this? Uh, who uh, spoke spoke or who gave this Shrimad Bhagavatam? It was Vyasdev. And who told him to write it? His guru. Who was his guru? Narad Muni. And uh, there are four divisions of the Vedas Vedanta Sutras, Puranas, Mahabharat, and the Vedas. But nevertheless, he was not satisfied. So Vyasdev was not satisfied after writing all these four uh, divisions of the Vedas. And uh, then it's written, his dissatisfaction was observed by his spiritual master and thus Narad Muni advised him to write on the transcendental activities of Lord Sri Krishna. These transcendental activities are described specifically in the 10th canto of this work. But in order to reach to the very substance, one must proceed gradually by developing knowledge of the category. So, Lord Krishna's specific activities and pastimes and leelas and actions are mentioned in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, but now this is the first canto. So to reach to, to reach till the 10th canto, it will need maybe 10, 20 years. <laughs> but it's written here, one must proceed gradually. One should not directly jump into the 10th canto. Canto that is not uh, recommended here. Okay. It is natural that a philosophical mind wants to know about the origin of the creation. At night, he sees the stars and he naturally speculates about their inhabitants. Such inquiries are natural for man because man has a developed consciousness which is higher than that of animals. So that's what is written here that human beings are naturally more inquisitive because their intelligence is much more highly developed than animals. That doesn't mean animals are not developed but human beings have a much higher level of consciousness. The author of Srimad Bhagavatam gives a direct answer to such enquiries. Such enquiries. What are such enquiries? Such enquiries means enquiries about the universe, about the stars, the skies, yes, planets. <laughs> the author of Srimad Bhagavatam gives a direct answer to such enquiries. He says that Lord Krishna is the origin of all the creations. Sarva Karana Karanam. He is not only the creator of the universe but the destroyer as well. The manifested cosmic nature is created at a certain period by the will of the Lord. It is maintained for some time and then it is annihilated by His will. Therefore, the supreme will is behind all cosmic activities. Of course, there are atheists of various categories who do not believe in a creator, but that is due to a poor fund of knowledge. The modern scientist, for example, has created space satellites and by some arrangement or the other, these satellites are thrown into outer space to fly for some time at the control of the scientist who is far away. Similarly, all the universes within, with, with in, innumerable stars and planets are controlled by the intelligence of the personality of God. So, that is what is said here that man has made uh, many space shuttles and space satellites which keep rotating, revolving around the planets and in the cosmos. But... All the planets, all the nakshatras, everything, whatever is there, the entire cosmos, that is working under the direction of the intelligence of the Supreme Personality of God. So, that is under the control of Krishna. In the Vedic literatures, it is said that the Absolute Truth, Personality of God, is the chief amongst all living personalities. All living beings, beginning from the first created being, being Brahma, down to the smallest ant, 
are individual beings and above brahma there are even other living beings with individual capacities and the personality of godhead is also a similar living being so god is a person here that is what is being mentioned and he is an individual as are the other living beings but the supreme lord or the supreme living being has the greatest intelligence and he possesses supreme supermost inconceivable energies of all different varieties if a man's brain can produce a space satellite one can very easily imagine how brains higher than man can produce similarly wonderful things which are far superior so that's obvious if a man can make a satellite why can't god make all these planets the reasonable the reasonable person will easily accept this argument but there are stubborn atheists who would never agree shila vyasdev however at once accepts the supreme intelligence as parmeshwara as the parmeshwara he offers his respectful obeisances unto the supreme intelligence addressed as the para or the parameshwara or the supreme personality of god and that parameshwara is shri krishna as admitted in the bhagavad gita and other scriptures delivered by shri vyasdev and specifically in this in this shrimad bhagavatam in the bhagavad gita the lord says that there is no other para tattva samam bonam than himself therefore shri vyasdev at once worships the para tattva shri krishna whose transcendental activities are described in the 10th canto so that specifically description about lord krishna now unscrupulous persons go immediately to the 10th canto and especially to the five chapters which describes the lord's rasa dance this portion of the shrimad bhagavatam is the most confidential part of the great, of this great literature unless one is thoroughly accomplished in the transcendental knowledge of the lord one is sure to misunderstand the lord's worshipable transcendental pastimes called rasa dance and his love affairs with the gopis this subject matter is highly spiritual and only the liberated persons who have gradually attained to the stage of paramhamsa can transcendentally relish the rasa dance shila vyasdev therefore gives the reader the chance to gradually develop spiritual realization before actually relishing the essence of the pastimes of the lord therefore he purposefully he purposely invokes a gayatri mantra dhimahi satyam param dhimahi This Gayatri Mantra is meant for spiritually advanced people. When one is successful in chanting the Gayatri Mantra, he can enter into this transcendental position of the Lord. One must therefore acquire Brahmanical qualities or be perfectly situated in the quality of goodness in order to chant the Gayatri Mantra successfully and then to attain to the stage of transcendentally realizing the Lord, His name, His fame, His qualities and so on. So basically it's told here that Lord Krishna's rasa dance which is his intimate interactions with the gopis of Vrindavan it is a very highly elevated pastime spiritually and if somebody is not qualified and they read these pastimes then they will think oh krishna is like a man and the gopis are like the girls yes they are both enjoying physically or they are having mundane materialistic enjoyment but that is not what it is actually it's the highest level of spiritual perfection so that is what is said here that if we are not qualified to reach that to read such things we should not read because then we will give a mundane interpretation to those spiritual topics and then we will have our downfall in spiritual life and it is also said about gayatri mantra here that the gayatri mantra is very powerful and it is to be chanted by those who have acquired brahmanical qualities which is the second diksha which we get yes the first diksha we get is hari naam diksha which is the initiation of the name Uh, and then we get the brahmanical initiation the second initiation so if somebody doesn't have second initiation he is not supposed to chant the gayatri mantra ideally one must therefore acquire brahmanical qualities or be perfectly situated in the quality of goodness in order to chant the gayatri mantra successfully that is what is written now shrimad bhagavatam is the narration of the swarupa of the lord manifested by his eternal potency and his etern and this potency is distinguished from the external potency which has manifested the cosmic world which is within our experience which means that krishna's 
existence is spiritual it is not like this material realm yes which we can perceive in this cosmic world Srila Vyasadeva makes a clear distinction between the two in this shloka Sri Vyasadev says here in that the manifested internal potency is real. Internal potency is his original spiritual potency. It is called Antaranga Shakti and the external potency is known as Bahiranga Shakti. That is the material realm which we see. Srila Vyasadev says here in that the manifested internal potency is real. Whereas the external manifested energy in the form of material existence is only temporary and illusory like the mirage in the desert in the desert mirage in the desert mirage there is no actual water so in a desert when we can see sometimes from very far we might we might be in a illusion that oh there's water it looks like that but actually there's no water so that's how the material world is we think there's a lot of enjoyment here yes boy girl man woman wealth riches food luxury but actually it's all illusory the soul is just hankering after mundane materialistic things but it will never become happy that's what is said here that it it is only temporary and illusory why temporary because whoever we love one day they will perish from this piece of earth and one day we ourselves will perish that is why it is temporary there is only the appearance of water real water is somewhere else there you see that's the beauty the manifested cosmic creation appears as reality but reality of which this is but a shadow is in the spiritual world absolute truth is in the spiritual sky not in the material sky in the material sky everything is relative truth this is to say one truth depends on something else this cosmic creation results from the interactions of the three modes of nature sattva rajatama and the temporary manifestations are so created as to present an illusion of reality to the bewildered mind of the conditioned soul who appears in so many species of life including the higher demigods like brahma indra chandra and so on in actuality there is no reality in the manifested world there appears to be reality however because of the true reality which exists in the spiritual world where the personality of god eternally exists with his transcendental paraphernalia so here it said basically that there are different posts and positions like the post of brahma indra chandra they are all living entities who have occupied these positions but they are all temporary and they are also destined to be uh, destroyed in due course of time and it's like the water the mirage in the desert so it's written here that real water is somewhere else so the ultimate superior the highest form of existence which is eternal existence which is satchit ananda it is there in the spiritual world only there appears to be reality however because of the true reality which exists in the spiritual world so this material world is like a reflection of the spiritual world where the personality of god eternally exists with his transcendental paraphernalia all right so i think it's quite long ah uh, yes half is done and the next half i'll be discussing in the other video all right so stay tuned and if you're new then subscribe and if you have not yet seen the other two videos then please see it and that is it from my side god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below okay until next time wish you good luck bye bye share this video with somebody who wants to know the bhagavatam okay bye bye see you